Today we're going shopping in the Goodwill bins. I'm looking for some new decor for my home for the new year and I'm so glad that you're here to come along with me. Hello there and welcome. My name is Lisa and I'm glad that you've joined me for this Goodwill bins shopping trip. If you are not familiar with the bins, they literally have bins full of merchandise that did not sell at all of the Goodwill retail locations. So they ship them to the regional Goodwill bins and you pay by the pound. That's also why it's sometimes called the Goodwill pound store and everything is super cheap. You have larger bulk items like furniture that are priced individually but everything here in these bins are paid by the pound and I will share my grand total of what I spent on this day at the Goodwill bins with you at the end of the video so be sure you stick around for that and if you love thrifting definitely hit that subscribe bar and notification bell so you can come back for more I am definitely going to be doing more thrifting in 2024 and would love for you to be here for that I was on the fence about this wreath. It was really pretty and I felt like I could maybe make it over. I kept going back to it. I put it in my basket. I took it out of my basket and I ultimately decided to leave it behind, but it was a great little wreath. You can find good stuff here just because it is at the bins does not mean that they don't have good items here. Now, this particular location is never organized. It is actually quite scary for me to um, rummage through the bins because you never know what you're going to find. I really need to keep gloves in my car to rummage through here. I'm mostly afraid of of broken glass and sharp objects. This little new in-package roll, I did, was not sure what that was, but I snagged it because I wanted to open it up and figure it out. Before I do that, do you know what it is? Tell me down in the comments if you know what this item was be used for. This Goodwill Bins location is also notorious for having way more clothing bins than home decor. So that is a great thing if you love to shop for clothes. I don't particularly like to do that. I am more focused on home decor. You can see the bulk items here. They had quite a good selection. I've seen better, but I've seen worse. If you are in the market for a chair, then they had all of these here. And again, they're marked individually. They had some pretty artwork, even just for the frames. If you switched out the artwork, I was not in the market for anything big and bulky this trip. But as you can see, there are a lot of really beautiful things to pick from and they were all reasonably priced. Sadly, there are a lot of things in the bins that are just a, just actual trash and should just have been thrown away. This bag was really nice and I almost got this little painting. It was an oil painting done and signed, very beautiful, looked very old, but I ended up leaving that behind for somebody else. I rescued so many other things though. This basket was cute and I had it in my shopping cart and then took it out and contemplated this as well. Just because it is a good deal doesn't mean you should bring everything home with you. I was excited about this long rattan basket, but when I pulled it up and out of the bin, it had that broken handle. So I left that behind for somebody else that maybe could repurpose it or fix it without that handle.
this particular bin had several boxes full of really pretty dishes and ceramics and if you dig around through all of them a lot of times you can find complete sets of different items different plates or glasses or bowls whatever it is that you're looking for and so you just have to dig around and it's amazing that not everything in here is broken because it is literally just thrown around and tossed I thought this little angel was super sweet. I thought this Santa sleigh was really pretty, but it had several places where it was broken and damaged, so I left that one behind as well. My husband was a really good sport this day. He was with me and he came to the bins and helped me rummage around and find several treasures. I liked this little teapot. Uh, it was nothing fancy about it, but it, that is actually what made me like it. And I wanted to bring it home, but it did not have the lid and I could not find it in any of the boxes. So it was another item that I left behind. of clear glass and cut glass crystal was in this bin and again you can see that broken plate you have to be careful of my future daughter-in-law had mentioned that she did not have any wine glasses so my husband helped me dig around in the bins here and we found a set of these cut glass crystal goblets unfortunately out of the four one had a huge nick out of the base but she got three really pretty crystal wine glasses that cleaned up very nicely after giving them a vinegar and hot water dawn dish soap mixture bath and cleaned them up sanitized them they were as good as new The flower on that little tray had not been broken. I would have totally brought that home. It was so pretty. I loved it. Looking back at my footage, I don't know why I didn't grab and bring this white and blue vase home because I really do like it. I like the shape, but I also like the color of it. So here's my basket with all of the things I found and this is where I'm making that final decision to put this wreath back for somebody else to bring home and love. I just feel like I can find something that I like more on another day as well as that a little lavender basket. I put that back and then look my sweet husband. He found this really pretty crystal Christmas tree. So it came home with me as well. And surprise, surprise, as I was heading to the checkout, I saw this really pretty brass pedestal bowl. Some really great finds here at the Goodwill bins on this particular day. So I was super excited. We're gonna get this all home and I'm gonna show you how I sanitize and clean everything up so that it looks beautiful in our home, starting with those crystal wine glasses. My husband cleaned these up for me, so I did not get the process on film. He just used very hot water, some white distilled vinegar, and a few drops of Dawn dish soap. He let those soak, and then he uh, wiped them and cleaned them down. And you can just see how pretty they are. They are in really good condition. Just a lovely find. For any soft fabric or washable items, I love to use this Lysol laundry sanitizer. I 
found this off camera on my way to the checkout counter. It is the Santa Claus made from a vintage quilt scrap and I loved it. I thought it was so cute. So I'm putting it in my laundry bag with that laundry sanitizer, running it through a delicate cycle and then I will let it dry and it turns out to be perfect, clean and sanitized. For this vintage handmade needlepoint stocking that I found, I am going to soak this in laundry sanitizer in my sink. I was afraid to run it through the washing machine because of that delicate needlepoint. I did not want to ruin it. It did not have any stains or markings on it, so soaking it and sanitizing it was all it needed to make it brand new, and I cannot wait to use it in my home next year for Christmas. This next item I got is a straw purse, and it would be lovely to carry as a handbag, especially for the beach, but I am going to use it to hang on my pegboard in my back hallway, to put florals in it, you could put mail in it, that sort of thing as a home decor item, where I would normally just submerge my wicker baskets and soak them, clean them up directly. You want to be careful with straw that is a little more delicate cut like this. So with that same laundry sanitizer, I have filled it up a little bowl here with some hot water and I'm just going to kind of hand wash the lining of the bag, let it soak and sanitize. Once I've done that, I'm going to squeeze all the excess water out and dry it. And then using fresh sanitized water, you could also use vinegar and water. I'm going to take a washcloth. I'm going to wipe down the surface of the bag on the outside. This purse did not have any stains or any markings on it. So it really just needed a good sterilizing just to make sure that all the dust and grime was off of it. But again, that delicate straw, be careful not to saturate it and soak it. If you do, let it air dry thoroughly because it can grow mold and mildew on it if you're not careful. Once I have wiped down my bag completely on all sides, I'm going to take some Lysol disinfecting spray and just give it a once over as well with that and then hang it up and let it completely air dry. It turned out to be such a pretty item. I'm so glad I snagged it. Maybe you already have a straw purse or bag in your closet that you could repurpose for a hanging floral arrangement. The brass pedestal bowl that I picked up is looking kind of rough. There are several spots on it that are discolored and the bowl of it here has this sticky floral putty on it. Covering up a paint opener, I am gently scraping that off, getting as much of it off as possible, all while being careful not to scratch the brass any more than it already is. I typically like to use Brasso to polish my brass, but today I'm going to actually use my barkeeper's friend. I have the liquid version of it. You can also use the powder to polish your brass. You just want to make sure you keep your rag and your item wet so that it does not scratch it and go in soft, gentle, circular motion. This worked really good. It was not that dull or grimy, so I didn't feel like I needed to bust out the harsh brasso to do this. That little black spot there is permanently tarnished, um, I don't know, corroded on the brass. I think it adds character, and no more than I paid for this piece, it is fine with me. I'll just turn that to the back uh, when I am decorating and displaying it. But just gently rub that barkeeper's friend over your brass piece and it will quickly polish it and shine it right up. I'm going to use some Goo Gone to get off the last little bit of that stickiness from the floral putty. It took it right up with just a little bit of elbow grease. And like I said, it's not 
perfect or pristine. There was some damage to this already, but it cleaned up nicely and I'm going to be able to use it in and around my home. I can't wait to style it for my winter decor and then I can already see it for my spring and Easter. It's going to be so pretty. all the glassware I got it is so easy you just run it through your dishwasher I was a little bit afraid of the gold trim coming off of uh, one of the pieces here in the dishwasher but I decided for the price I paid it was worth taking a chance because it was a very grimy from being all over and beyond at the bins you can see though that it survived and the gold is intact. It is all cleaned up. There's nothing particularly special about this. It was a made in China piece, but it is so pretty and it's going to be perfect for spring decorating. I can put little Easter eggs in here. So come back and check that out because I will have that for you. Spring will be here before we know it. So I am already on the lookout for things that I can use to decorate the season and this little bowl was another one of those it had these really pretty pink flowers around the edge and it had these decorative handles that were painted to look like wood it was very pretty and I thought it would be a great accent piece I think this vase could be considered underrated it is simple classic clean lines to it it just has this off-white cream color I initially thought I would do a DIY on it after cleaning it up I think I like it like it is so I can always come back later and do a little paint job on it and upgrade it I thought this glass dish was unique with its little pedestal legs I picked it up just to put in my decor closet you never know when you need just a simple glass dish even though we've just passed Christmas, I have this really pretty crystal Christmas tree my husband found in the bins. It is going to be so nice to have next year. It can be styled multiple ways and will look really pretty in my home. We can't forget about this mystery roll. I think I might know what it is, but we're going to see as we unroll it here. It is in a very good condition, new in the package. It's got these clips. It has Velcro on each end, and I am pretty sure this is a lampshade cover. So we're going to give it a try. I don't think the lamp I'm going to use is the right size, but we're going to check it out and see. This lampshade is definitely not the correct size for this cover, but I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how this works. The clips go around the top and the bottom of the metal frame of your lampshade, and then it Velcros on the back side. This is going to be perfect for a dirty lampshade, a lampshade that I find thrifting that is not necessarily the color, but it is the size and shape. So I will definitely be keeping the measurements for this little lampshade cover in my purse. I can be on the lookout for the correct size of a lampshade. They're so expensive. So this is a nifty little thing. I never knew this existed. And I'm glad I took a chance on it at the Goodwill bins. I almost forgot about this little basket. It is lined with plastic so you could put a live plant in there. I just rinsed this off and sprayed it down with Lysol spray. So it is disinfected. It just needs to dry. It has been a three ring circus of chaos around my house for the last couple of weeks with the holidays. I've had company. I've been traveling. So it's no wonder I almost forgot this sweet little basket. As promised, the grand total after rounding up for charity was only $14 for everything in today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today for this Goodwill Ben shopping trip and haul. I am so glad that you're here. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and come back joining me for the next video. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. See you again real soon.